welcome to part two of this Hepmuller build. So, um, as I said in the last video, the first important stuff you have to do is get your A pillar aligned. So you pretty much build the car from the A pillar, uh, the front fender, and backwards to the door. Um, as many cars, this is a kind of a wild setup because not having a dashboard cut out like this, but um, in my case, it's uh, good for showing how to do it. In most cases, um, the short version, like you can see, I have marked here, is uh, plenty for uh, for most rotten out places. But um, yeah, mine uh, in the other side, can you see here on the video? Yeah, this one over here is uh, really bad, old repair all the way up to so around here somewhere, I think. So um, in this case, it's better to change everything. And um, on this one, um, this piece that goes inside actually has a little bend here. And on this one, rotten. So I'm checking that big piece on, on my build. This is uh, also from... Um, Viatan in Finland, who sell these large pieces. Be in mind, this model comes without the inner piece for the hinges. But luckily, I got another one. And this is actually from CSP. I don't know who made them for them. Maybe it's Wolfsburg West, I don't know. But anyway, this piece I'm gonna reuse on this one. So, first things first, uh, be aware, like you can see in some of this, there is a little uh, extra structure inside this A-pillar going all the way up to here, into to, to the highest place of the A-pillar. So uh, don't cut, don't cut too deep in the first, in the first hit. Be aware there is a reinforcement like this that just goes all the way up, up to this. Vietan also sells this one. This is an alignment tool for air pillar stuff, so uh, you are sure you don't get caught up and uh, it doesn't fit when you're done. So this is a um, kind of a model from what your door in original position is located, so you can't do it wrong and you have control over your, uh, your, uh, your, your holes for the door, basically. So. I'm gonna do a little stuff here to see where I can cut it. And I'm basically just gonna cut every piece out of it. So I have a fresh mount here for my next step, which it is the inner fender. So I have some fresh metal to bend around and it make it a lot more beautiful. On the original, I didn't even, even know that before I begin to work with this. Here at at the, this A pillar, there is actually an original uh, joint here. So uh, what Vietan did is pretty much just do it in the correct size and do it on the same spot as they did at the factory. So that's pretty cool. I, I like that. So um, we're gonna take a little time this time, see me measuring up where to cut it and then just cut the outer stuff out of this piece and keep the inner stuff and then we see have what we had to do in the bottom here to get my new bracket for the doors into this so um, that's what we want to do now something here there is uh, of course a uh, small spot wheels in the a pillar section so basically what you see here uh, spot wheels and uh, the same goes for from inside to to have a little 
bracket reinforcement to be there and then I just grind it on slightly slightly on the top so I can see the, the marks where the spot welds is coming through and then I know where to drill. So that's the next step I just wanted you to show you. More time lapse. A lot of stuff to uh, to consider here. You have to make sure it's flat this way, have the right uh, groove or bend this way, and this then just take your time to do it. Probably check all the the measurements and be sure everything is good. So it's not easy, but uh, it. I really think it's be more uh, straightforward if it was on a car rather than this, but uh, I don't have that luxury. So this is it. A pillar is uh, tacked and hold together here. I don't want to touch anymore because I want to be completely sure it fits uh, the car itself. So only tack will so we have the opportunity to yeah, adjust it a little bit, but it should be it should be pretty good actually. So uh, next step is um, checking out how much I have to cut out to, to make room for the Caprile uh, top. Because it's little, it's not just a little, it's a much different than uh, an ordinary. And you can really see it here. This is the normal split um, frame right here. So the Cabriolet is much more outwards um, in the A pillar top. So there's a little trimming. And this is kind of funny. This is hip milieu only. They have this little groove for the door. Uh, normal Caprolis have not. And um, the reason I know that is because I got one here. And as you see, no. Yep. And I'm pretty lucky that I got not one but two Caprolis to look at it because I have. Um, I have a car to take measurement from, so I took measurement from here to here, so I know it's right. So, yeah, I'm gonna try to trim this because there's a little difference here. You have to remake to uh, 
to make the stuff fit, but uh, that's okay. Next step. So, um, I have it in my jig now, for the time being, just to be sure everything is uh, where it should be and um, it fits great. So, uh, I'm going to go in a bit further and, uh, and yesterday a big package came from Yetan panels in uh, Finland, so uh, now we are rolling really really nice quality stuff so uh, as said in the first video the new floor paint piece new structure for for the frame head and new bottoms and new pan bottom that you saw on the picture so a lot of lot of cool stuff from uh, from from the attain new running boards also from from him, great quality. New seat brackets for both sides. This is actually for my capillary uh, sweater. Not important. Um, I'm building it, it as a 50, 51 model, so it should have a little cover for getting to the um, transmission dash transmission bolt for putting fluid on it. Then I bought new. Uh, Air guide from the heat to the, to the front window should be something like like this. And whatever else, yeah, uh, B pillars. Yeah, one of them was wrong. He sent me a new one. It's coming. And some small stuff I missed for the pedal assembly. So. Now we are going back to work and finally new it must be like the other side this one like this so rolling uh, before I'm getting too much uh, carried away here I'm gonna get this uh, blasted uh, getting all the old stuff off uh, the other side I didn't know if you could see the video. The other side I have uh, uh, cleaned up and uh, primed, so um, that's okay. But uh, before any fenders gonna be fitted here, the this stuff will be cleaned up. So make it nice and pretty before putting it together. Now's the change to do it, and uh, I couldn't help thinking uh, a lot of you see beautiful restored cars. How many of them? <laughs> look like this inside so now I have the chance uh, painted in stages so we can get uh, paint inside all of these areas before putting more panels on so it's gonna be really really nice uh, over all over the place can't, can't wait can't wait uh, little test fitment of the top frame for the cabaret stuff it fits pretty good. I don't know yet how my angle are here, so no uh, welding, only tack welds for now, and my little special tools to clamp the stuff together. Really, really nice. So yeah, let's see how it goes. Next step. is um, putting the new sheet metal plates from the assign in this uh, 
uh, pan here. So basically just cut stuff off. Be careful not to cut too much off so you don't have enough to to weld back or, uh, together again. So I just marked here where there's the maximum I can I can take out of this pan. And um, here is pretty straightforward and also here pretty straightforward. There are spot wheels all the way over here on the edge all the way down there. So drill, kick <laughs> and hammer it off. So here we go. So don't to cut too much off at once. Um, take it by pieces and just tack weld it and then look at it. Find uh, the squareness of this before uh, just fully welded it. Tack weld it, test it in every direction. Now I have this top one I'm gonna tack weld on uh, on here. Then I have the, the bottom to to align it before I fully weld it. So it basically gonna be like this before I weld it. Just to keep an idea of what I'm doing. Yeah. As seen on the time lapse, I'm uh, using this uh, power tool. Yeah, I don't know may, how many countries you know this, but uh, it's a um, it's a serious thing. But it works really fast. But uh, don't use it everywhere. But for this application, it's good. So some of the spot wheels it, it can take without me drilling, some not. So try forward if you uh, have a tool like this or buying one. So let's go. So it's like the first uh, day in Christmas. What hides under number one? Yeah. Well, it's still black in here. Kind of. Looking good. Sweet. Again, this uh, this bottom in here was toast. Not see how how many of the spot wheels was uh, not even remotely hanging on so I think this was a good good decision. Let's try the new piece. Just a quick look. Oh yeah. Nice.
there. Well, I'm gonna do a little more grinding and stuff and see how I can get this one to fit. So, hang on. things I want to talk about. Um, right now I'm, um, I'm trying to align up the two uh, floor pans to this pan. Uh, this is from uh, Funky Green or Garrison or whatever they're called. Uh, normally they are bright green. This has been sandblasted. It, I don't mind. Uh, green is not my thing. So um, I'm trying to get all this stuff aligned. Trouble is, if you call, can call it trouble, is at, that uh, the pan has a little too wide uh, in this end and and here as well. So you have to move it a little bit around to get it to fit, fit as you want. And I can show you what I mean here. As you can see, my original hole for the pan is under here. So in order to get this to match this one, I have to get the pan uh, backwards and a little bit inwards. I don't know if you can see it, but it doesn't line up here. So, but this is a very important step, uh, like all, all things else. It must be perfect before you move on. If you just had welded these floor pans in as they were, you would get big trouble when you get uh, closer to to mounting stuff, uh, the air pillars, the the rear end, the heater channels. So you, this is a very important step. So I'm gonna do a time lapse in just a bit, um, where you can see me measuring, um, putting on, taking off, putting on, taking off, until I'm completely satisfied with the result. If you have <coughs> A project like this going with pan halves, um, do yourself a favor. Don't trust the new parts, even though it's a very good quality. Measure, measure twice, measure third time. Measure, measure, measure. And if you are really smart, um, take the holes you have for the for the heat channel, uh, make a alignment or a measurement from here to here, and that way and that way as well and write it down on a piece of paper then you can be completely sure that it's going to be in the right place again or even better take one off put a, the new one on then you have the other one as a reference point and then uh, do the same thing with the last one when you have them fully uh, welded that's what i would like to do but uh, the pan half was already cut off when I got the pan, uh, as you saw uh, previously on the video. So um, yeah, that's how it is. I have a, another pan right in there where I can uh, take measure from, so I have completely sure it sits as it should. But again, um, there's not much you can do. You have this point, and I luckily still have this point, so I'm kind of knowing where we have to sit, but. Um, there's gonna be measurements, for sure. Um, this is a vice grip, as many know. Perfect, nice tool. But you can get a little in trouble if you don't have the right kind of tools. You can see here, yeah, I wouldn't be able to have a, a vice grip on. Uh, it will kind of be in the way from 
whales I'm going. So there's a couple of options in, in terms of that. This is um, a classic um, body repair screw. There's a little self-tapper. See if I can get it to focus like a drill thing. Then it goes through the middle and uh, squeezes the two or three pieces together. Really, really nice. I have other stuff as well that uh, you're gonna you're gonna see me use. And uh, whoops, this is this one. There's a great tools as well. Yeah, this one. Little different story. Um, you have to drill a hole to get this one in. Then there is a little um, tool for this that goes like this. And when you put them inside the hole you had drilled, let me see if you can get the right angle. Uh, yeah, there we go. Then you push it through, and that little pin inside will, will push the two metal plates together and squeeze them really hard so they are um, completely tucked together. Great tool for sure. Um, and I used that a lot. And then the smart thing is both with those and uh, the self-tappers is if for instance you say I'm gonna take this one, it sits where I want, you can bolt um, two or three places and then you always have the three holes as reference points to where it sits perfect so you don't have to measure every time you have to uh, put it on. So a great way to keep your panels uh, where you want them and you can, you can take them off and on again and again and when it always fit in the previous holes you have drilled so a little tack tip from me tick tip tack tip so now i'm gonna work you're gonna see a time lapse and uh, i'm gonna explain if i see something that makes sense fitting very well but uh, again better too much for plan you can cut off than not having enough so uh, a little trimming time and this is exactly why I uh, said before measure and measure and measure again before ex expecting it to fit because clearly it doesn't always do that same as here not good.
saw me putting the front pieces on, this is primarily for checking out the, the gaps on, um, on these. There is a lot of stuff going on. Um, so uh, think about this has to be completely flat all the way down to the heat channel uh, bottom here. So it starts in there and goes up and it must be aligned to make the inner fender fit perfectly with the gap. Um, I don't want to bolt my uh, self tappers into this before I have more stuff put on, but it's kind of to get an idea of what's going on. I have a little gap here. That's not, I'm not so worried about it. I was at first, but uh, if I take off the clamp, I can easily push it in with my hands. So uh, no, no worries. Again, although this is a really, really good quality parts, there is still stuff that has to be uh, fitted or bent or I'd say forced, but um, adjusted is the right word before um, putting it on. So I'm going to do a little more checking up on stuff, alignment stuff. And um, yeah, then it's kind of almost the part where we have to take it apart again, because again, I wanted this, I want this blasted before I go any further, because now my um, my pan is sitting where I want it. All the edges are flushed and fits really nice. Bolt holes like you so previously is fitting. Everything's looking good. Even the gaps here is close to perfect. So really, really happy about it. It's gonna be great. Not something you see normally. Um, it's not a lot of cars that's been done like this uh, after restoration or other, other than the really top quality stuff. But it, I think it's really, really nice detail. They, they made it completely as original. So yeah, it's gonna be good. So um, I will continue work, but I think the next part is gonna get some of this stuff sandblasted. So uh, we actually can start taking this car together if you can call this a car <laughs> again um, I have also made a little um, repair here in the yeah, I don't know what the word on English is we call it Napoleon hat or something so uh, maybe it's the same for, for you I was studying some pictures before um, of my previous build this is almost um, as it looks, should look, there's a little funny groove. And right about here, I have to make a little uh, bracket for my um, uh, Joker cable guide handle. And it's much easier when I don't have a, a bottom in this. So get that to, to look pretty. And um, again, I have to cut this up to make it look like a, a split window rear end so I can have the the inner fenders that must be completely flat here no groove for the mounting shock so that's a little different story I have that upstairs so I have to cut that off but before I do that I'm thinking about making a little bracketry going over here and rest here so I'm positive I'm gonna get the right angles when I'm cutting this off and replacing with a new one so um, yeah, small steps. Now for some time lapse, I think. This bit right here has been bothering me since I, I got it. As you can see, this is uh, supposed to be flat and um, and line up with this, and then they I, I think from the factory they are um, braced in some kind of way in this corner. We can take a look at my my split window block over here, so you can see what I mean. So this has never been touched and or welded or anything. 
but you have a very, very straight uh, edge here and you can almost see there's some kind of welt in there and the, and the piece I got is kind of bent the wrong way so I will try to to make this curve uh, look better and that takes some a tool I have over here to do that look like this <coughs> You can almost call it a, a hand hold uh, metal bender. So my plan is to take this and, and twist it around and, and maybe hammer it up so it it can be completely straight and flat. So um, that's the next step I'm going to do. And uh, it's gonna be in time lapse time. Enjoy. turned out really really nice and um, again time-lapse video all of these cool tools check this out bingo I really really dig this again I don't know the wrist how good that will be but that was pretty pretty good I'm really, really happy about that. Looks very original compared to to this. It's funny how they just, as I said that before, just plug welded or whatever they did back then here in the corner. Not sure how I'm gonna attack that, but uh, you'll see. And now you have the opportunity to spot weld it inside. So, um, yeah. Nice. Moving on. So, uh, what I'm doing here is making um, an inside pipe in my right B channel. And this is uh, basically for um, having your wire, a wire loop, going to the, from the front to the back of the car. And uh, it's uh, hidden inside the heater channel in, um, in the right side. So a lot of stuff's going on. I made it on the, um, the 52 uh, convertible inside as well. This on the hip mill is a little bit different. Not much, but a little bit different. So not only do you have a pipe going on, you have a little reinforcement to, uh, to enforce the, the heater channel so the car is more stiff. But it also works as a guide to the air from the engine to heat up the, the car in, in both the legs and up to the front window. So I have to make room for a wiring loom pipe going in here and going up in the A pillar and up to the, to the rest of the harness and the, the speedo and what have you. Further that. As explained, I have to have this one inside, and that's for the the heat is guided uh, more easily up to the front, and kind of uh, make a little yeah, what you call it, shield for 
not he overheating the the pipeline where the, the the wiring is. So this is what I'm gonna do. This is what come with the kit. It will take some modifications because um, this is uh, flat and uh, can you see it on the video? Uh, kind of. I remove this a little bit. But it has a flat surface and that's fine. But uh, the heat channel bottoms have a, a little step up or uh, reinforcement. So when this part is going to hit the floor of this, it's going to not uh, touch everywhere on the on the flat side of the, the, the pan bottoms here, or the heat channel bottoms. So I may have to cut them up and make a little uh, notch every time that hits one of these to get it flat down. But um, that's how it is. Custom stuff. It takes time. So what are you gonna when you see now it's me trying to cut this pipe to fit uh, as close as possible. Original it's two, two, 22 millimeters. I found one that's a little bit bigger. I've, I heard that was a good idea to do because then easier access and yeah more easy to get the wiring loop inside the, the pipe. So I did that but um, I have this pre-bent but it needs some work because you have a little less aggressive uh, turn here. I, I would like to have it a little more smooth so uh, the wiring loom is easier to get inside. So that's what I'm gonna do now. So enjoy. Good time to explain what I did. Um, I just don't want to forget to do it. So uh, first up, I had some uh, zinc coat inside. Zinc coat is good uh, between metal, sheet metal, and uh, pretty much nothing else. So um, what I did, I sprayed some zinc between this area where this bracket or reinforcement is gonna sit, and then I'm taping it off because when I put this on. I don't want any uh, uh, too much primer against this area. So zinc is good for when welding spots together. Now I'm masking off. And then I, um, I'm gonna prime the whole thing inside so I don't forget it. And um, and I found some black primer because the the car is gonna be black. So not just to to the be areas where you can see some red or gray or other color primer I choose the black primer so I'm gonna black this up inside I don't want to go in the smell and um, then continue so black primer with uh, the sink coat not painted the primer only sink and uh, the same goes for this one so eventually gonna be uh, spot welded from from the outside and in 
So now we have some primer on. Now don't forget it. And uh, yeah, let's move on. Apologizing for me just kicking it off, but um, it really was a struggle to just get some kind of of a gap. But uh, I'm getting somewhere now. So uh, again, I have nothing to to start with other than my A pillar, as I talked about a lot of times now. So I had to do something about finding the right direction of this and again I don't have any uh, reference points whatsoever so I did work this, this worked with a little struggle so don't mind uh, the gap is not as big as it is here as long as it's too much here and too uh, little here then I can move the back door, door a little bit backwards but it's just to have a straight line to have something to work with so uh, that's why you're seeing me do it like this. But uh, again, this is okay. Okay, ish. We're not there yet, but uh, we're getting there. Moving on. for the lack of talking but uh, I'm just so carried away about these door gaps and get it in to fit and uh, well we are we are kind of there it's all mock up I know I know but um, it doesn't change that there's something looking right so uh, it takes a lot of, of fiddling around and um, if you don't know, these are the adjusters for door gaps on, um, on, on Type 1 Beetles. So, and unfortunately, both of them was um, made on, remade, worked on. And it, I, I, I didn't even have one over here, so I was kind of lost um, where to sit. But I had some, some places I could kind of see where it has, has to go so um, yeah I think it's it's okay now I'm, I'm pretty uh, fired up about it I think it's gonna work and again this all of this is gonna go away but uh, I don't, don't, didn't want to cut too much off I need something to work with before just cutting everything off so I had some kind of reference point so but it, it worked it looked and look pretty good there's a lot of stuff i need to get trimmed small imperfections and um, and this is not completely like the other one and yeah it's kind of touching there so but i'm i'm getting there it's gonna be good
little bit of hip muller only stuff. So uh, on a hip muller, uh, not compared to the other capillaries, where the the semaphore sits right here, and I because on a normal beetle it sits up here, like my my split. But um, the Carmen factory did move the semaphore from here down to here. But on a hip muller, they um, they put them up in in front in the front quarter panel, like this. I know this is not a correct symbol for uh, cover. Uh, it's ordered. I'm not gonna buy an original one. I'm gonna buy a reproduction one. So that come later. But uh, I could easily make the, all the holes and whatever we needed to to get it fixed. Um, I've been asking around where this the correct place to place this symbol for on a on a hip muller. And I have four different versions where it should sit. So um, this is what I'm uh, gonna get for my project. Uh, 79 millimeters top and bottom and 52 from the from the top. And then we have around 176. 7.7 in the actual hole and most people I've seen have around 20 millimeters. I'm a little conservative and uh, putting it at 19 as the time being. So a little bit of um, yeah, hip muller only stuff because on the First edition of a hip muller. This is something I learned from the Kirchen from uh, Germany. The first edition hip muller from the very first up to December 1949. They actually used the uh, the inner structure from from the A pillar from a, a normal beetle to make the the, the the brackets for for this version. So basically, they took. This piece cut out this section, with, which I have done, just to have some reference points. And this one is actually gonna be the left one, and the left one is gonna be the right one. So what they did, they made a, um, a little bracket to extend this a little bit, then put it in reverse, and then it was kind of just hanging in the air, like something like like this and um, for what I've learned from all the experts in Hitmüller they changed that in December uh, 49 to another version more similar to this one and the, uh, the reason for that is that the, the first edition when they washed your car driving in the rain the rain was just pour in to the, the brackets for the zipper for run down to the heat channels which is in there and potentially overflow the bottom of the, the, the car. So I didn't want that. I think it's cool anyway. It was, it's gonna be a cool bracket to have done it that way. I know it's not gonna be a lot of rain I'm gonna drive in, but uh, I'm again building as a 5051 model. So this is what I came up with and I thought, thought it was the best. These brackets, simple for brackets for hip muller, you can buy new from uh, yeah, different manufacturers. They're not of huge production, so it's 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 a small small bit of of stuff coming out of it. But my new friend uh, Jonathan Garcia from uh, I think he's from France actually. I don't I'm not sure. If you see this, uh, Jonathan, please uh, <laughs> correct me. He had uh, made some templates i found the templates as well but he had a very, very good template so i i copied that and um if it's okay with him maybe i can post it in a, a link on my facebook page so you can see what this is and how to make them yourself this a little little complicated but uh we figured it out uh eventually this is just uh, the pre-bend of course this would be completely flattened out when you're doing it out of a piece of sheet metal. 
But basically you have um, the hole for the bottom of the center four and the top bracket like you have on the original piece, if you, wanna, if you like to call that. So it has a little curve, of course, because it had to follow the lines of the, the inner structure of the fender. So I think the hip mill factory, this is not, not something I've came up with. This is how they did it with this wide uh, cut in the bend. And I basically think it's just for them easier to to make the curved um, yeah, bend here in the, the central four box. I tried, I tried, I tried. Again, if people know me, I'm a teacher in body repair and um, I tried at the school with different tools. I could not do this any different if um, I have to make a relatively sh sharp bend. So there was m maybe other ways to do it. We could have cut it in half down the center section and made two different brackets and then will it a bit together. But again, I want to do it like they did on the factory back in the, the 40s and 50s. So now I have to bend this at a, at a curve. And uh, as we call it in Denmark, Blue Ch Church B-Tema makes these and I bet other stuff do as well. There's actually a little number here. So basically, basically you can you can hand bend your your sheet metal with this one a little bit of the time and um, make this little curve. So again, these these bracket holes for for easier bend structure back in the the fifties for for the factory. So I have made this one, so I know it. As you can see. It fits the wideness of uh, each individual section perfectly with this little bracket bender thing. And uh, the last one is not that easy, like not that difficult. It just has to be a bend and uh, be bended around like this. So, and all when did all this is done, there will be a time lapse in a few seconds time while hustling with this. The original one just had spot wells all the way down here so and then we will cough be smoothened out with paint and stuff later so um, yes a little history lesson from from me and found actually the right yeah original look uh, bracket holder for uh, for the little screw that holds the zipper for him and it's very very really close to what they did on the factory so i don't even want to bother to try to drill this off i will just use the the new one i found so um that's what i'm gonna do a little time lapse of me bending this little thing and um, we keep on working little trimming of this edge before uh, we get any further you can see on my marks it's just a little bit too uh, wide and that means when you have to bend it around it will come so close to the inner fender that it probably won't be there and uh, it's sh yeah it shouldn't be that that wide so again new parts need trimming that's how it is but uh, it's a small thing so a little bit of trimming and then we uh, can move on.
more hip Müller stuff only. So um, on a normal beetle, as I think I said before in a previous clip in a movie, this is the, the heater pipe get, getting hot air up to the window. And on a hip Müller, they decide that's not that's not what we're gonna do. We're gonna make it more safe, I guess. So basically, on a hip Müller, you have to cut a piece of this section out of your boat boat size size of your sides of your frame, and then actually there's gonna be a, a 31 millimeter pipe going all the way around and down here and connect with the... Um, yeah, this is the wrong side, but uh, you get the idea. And connect with this, with the bracket. Um, I think they did that because uh, they wanted to make it more uh, stiff in the frame. So I have to find a pipe and get it bent in the position that I want. But um, first of all, I said it once and then I said it again. This is the thing I'm concerning about right now is getting tacked and doing so it sits somewhere where I want it. Then I'm gonna take it off and get it blasted and primed because yeah, I have to do it because it's now or never and it's impossible to get it uh, looking nice if I don't do it. So what I'm gonna do is gonna cut this section out, I know there's gonna be a pipe here anyway, so the blaster can get more access to to hidden areas where um, where the pipe is gonna sit when I'm I'm sure the the angles are right. I made this template, so I know I'm getting uh, the right angle and kind of fits all the way around. And when I have this sorted out and tacked all to this, then I can make the pipe for for the frame and then I can put the bracket on, then I can put the outer frame on, then I can put the the sheet metal over here and then I can put the rear end of fenders on. So it's all, all uh, most all the time small steps forward and steps backward to, to make something like this. But um, yeah, again you might as well just use a day or two measuring and be sure everything is where it should be before doing anything you have to undo again. So this is what I'm gonna do. Moving on. Here you can see the difference of uh, the rear torsion bar housing, where uh, this is a uh, split um, and uh, original. There was some weird brackets, uh, oil things that uh, kept the cars still when suspension worked. But um, yeah, you could ask yourself why do all this trouble just for for this but it looked right it looks more right this is gonna go away it's gonna be heat completely smooth and um, actually I'm gonna drill out uh, some holes here for my new shock tower so so we'll go inside here I still want to have ordinary shocks just a shorter version than uh, than this one this is a really big one on these cars so um, yeah I just wanted to show you that, that uh, this is going in to make it look more right. But uh, sandblasting, welding on, and then sandblast the whole bottom. So let's go.
So a little mock up of my Hepmüller only bottom uh, of the seat frame support. Uh, a lot of things going on that is only on Hepmüller. Um, and this is um, a kit, or something from the kit. Again, I bought a kit from uh, Mr. Wolf Parts in Sweden. He had a lot of it, but not all. And, and I missed all the seat bracket stuff. And um, I thought of making it myself, but I have no measurements, points whatsoever to, uh, to build from. So I ended up buying a kit uh, from a German guy called Dirk Hörsing. Um, great stuff. Um, I still have a little trouble finding out why you don't have every part of it, but uh, that's uh, another story. But again, about this one, this is the um, air box, if you could call it. So basically the, the capital lift stuff where the air intakes come, it's gonna sit over, over top of this. The air comes in here, goes around and down to the, the air filter. Yeah, and here as well. And it works like a, a drain. If it did drain, there's a, uh, a floating system that goes down there and all the way out in both sides. So that's pretty cool. Um, a little, <laughs> a lot of fab work to make this work. So. Uh, I'm kind of glad I didn't have to make this out of uh, some pictures found on the internet. So that's a good thing. But um, yeah, this I could have done myself. I think if I know the measurement, this is made by me. This edge is made by me. And this support bracket here is made by me. So um, basically I have this, but I'm missing a, a little extra um, reinforcement that goes from here i'll show you in a bit from there over here through this section out here and kind of ends out like this uh, but in one piece instead of two pieces this this is from the capital a from in there so it was just to see what i have to work with but it basically have to look like this so this piece here is missing i have to make it myself and um, I actually have made the the, the itch uh, and the round stuff. So now I have to measure a little bit out. I'm thinking I have to make a, a cut here and then twist it together to get the, the little um, yeah, itch you can see here. It, it's kind of uh, following the, the back of of this so you can see it's not it's not there i have to adjust it a little bit but uh, that's okay that's uh, that's no problem so that's what i'm gonna do now so let's see how it goes
So this is um, the, the prototype for uh, for the last one you saw on the picture. Um, not very pretty, I guess. Um, I had to figure out how to make this curve. Um, yeah, the round piece and get the edges around it and and stuff. You could probably grind this out and weld it up and make it pretty and get it to work. But yeah, <laughs> and even though the lot of this is not visible because there will be a little uh, strip here for for the carpet to come around, so you won't even be able to see this at first glance. But um, again, we are building it to be as perfect as possible with the talent um, I have. <laughs> but uh, my Mark II version was a lot better. Um, I got some new tools to make these kind of panels. So um, now these kind of things is possible. This is a little bit too long. It has to be short, just a, a little bit to to have the right length, length if, in, in compared to what it should like in original. And I have also made the, the left one, or the right one is it actually. So um, this is gonna be make done, but uh, things have happened. And uh, the car is now in, in a different position. You can get a quick glance. That's all you're gonna see because um, I'm gonna end it off on this episode of uh, the mighty edition of building a Hepmüller. Um, the next one will be in June. So stay tuned for the next, the next video. This is gonna be a long video, uh, as I can see with while editing, and I uh, just needed an outro for, for this, but um, this is gonna be good. There's a lot of stuff coming and uh, you can Really look forward to it. This is gonna be very good, I think. So, um, thanks for watching. Remember to tune in in June 2024, or um, and or, or if when you are seeing this and it's years later, there's a part uh, three ready to be seen. So um, enjoy, take care, see you later.